Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 jailbreak update. So when it comes to different jailbreak methods on the PS4, we're seeing major progress across many different fronts at the moment, with the most anticipated one, of course, being the Blu-ray exploit. So we just got the release of the Blu-ray plus lapse chain yesterday that allows us to jailbreak the PS4 using nothing but a Blu-ray disc. You just write the lapse.iso file from the project to a Blu-ray disc using image burn or equivalent software and insert the disc into your PS4. Copy the gold hen payload to the root of a USB drive that has been renamed to payload.bin and when you load the disc if the exploit is successful it will load gold hen within a second of the exploit running. It's lightning fast at loading the exploit although the initial release version did have a few problems for instance, the older firmwares like 9.00 and 9.03 had issues of the exploit failing and crashing, and it was actually recommended to switch to the remote loader version as there were issues with the laps.iso with the initial release. Luckily, these issues seem to have now been resolved in a follow-up version. So we're now on version 1.2 of the remote loader and 1.1 of the laps version. So if we take a look at the change log, we can see the remote jar loader now has added the internal jar loader feature for that you can run jar files from the disk now and it's also added a file proxy disabler feature so that you can access bdj sandbox file system so the app zero disk location using java file api we also have laps version 1.1 which has fixed a crash on 9.00 and 9.03 it's also changed how the usb loader works so it will now run the payload from the usb path and not the data path after it copies the payload to the data path. I guess if it ran it from the data path first and then copied the file, it would be running the outdated payload. And then also it checks the MNT USB 0 to USB 4 to find the payload.bin to execute. So I guess previously it was probably only checking USB 0. And if you had more than one USB plugged in at a time, it might not find the payload on the USB. So that issue has been resolved in this version too. So the two versions are the remote jar loader. So when you run that, you can send the lapse jar file over the network to execute it on the PS4. And then it also has the option now, as you can see here, that you can run the jar files from the disk and you can also access the sandbox file system. So that's all included in this version. But again, I think most people will just use the lapse ISO because that's the one that will just automatically run the jailbreak for you. So that has all been included there in this release. So we have a good update there with a new improved version. Another thing to mention here is that if you haven't loaded a Blu-ray on your console before, it will require a connection to the internet to activate the Blu-ray playback feature. I believe it's just to enable some video codecs. So you just need to reconnect your console to the internet just for about a minute or two. You know, you can make sure that automatic uh, updates, automatic downloads are disabled in your system settings. And then all you got to do is just reconnect to the network just for a few seconds and then load the Blu-ray disc, which should then allow it to load. You may also get a message here saying, do you want to enable this like BD live feature, Blu-ray live feature? I just normally say yes. And then you are up and running with the disc. And once the disc is loaded, you can then go ahead and disable your network connection again if you're wanting to keep your console offline for this. And you only have to do that once the first time you load a Blu-ray disc. Once it's active, you're fine. You can remain offline and you'll be able to load the disc as many more times as you like. So that's all you got to do there. Not too much of a big deal. You also need to make sure HDCP is enabled in your system settings. It should be by default. But uh, I know like people that record their screens with capture cards normally disable HDCP so that they can record. So in that case, you'll need to put it back on to run the Blu-ray disc. Now, I'm also seeing reports of people getting disk errors when loading the Blu-ray or it's showing up as an unformatted disk. I also recommend using, of course, image burn software and using the right image file to disk option to burn the Blu-ray. But the quality of your Blu-ray discs can also be an issue. I always personally use verbatim discs. I've been using them for many years back when I was burning Xbox 360 games to dual layer DVDs and they always seem to be the best quality with the least amount of problems. So it's verbatim BD-RE discs that I personally use for the Blu-ray exploit, and I haven't had a single issue with any of my discs so far. People using lesser quality discs seem to be running into problems. Now we're also seeing some custom modified versions of this exploit going around. One of them loads Gold Hen from an ISO itself, so you don't need a USB drive to load the payload or copy the payload for the first time. Now, it does seem maybe a little bit unnecessary because 
The whole point of the USB drive is mainly so that you can update the payload easily uh, with like a new gold hen release whenever it comes out and you don't have to load the payload from the USB drive every time since the payload is copied from the USB to the hard drive at launch so that the next time you want to load the exploit from the Blu-ray disc the USB drive is no longer required but if you want to update the payload then you can put the payload on the USB and it will update it on the hard drive. That is the whole point of the USB so you know having the gold hen permanently burned to the disc is fine but then you know if you want to update it you have to reburn the disc. So personally think using the USB drive makes more sense but obviously if you don't have a USB drive then you know, using one of those modified ISOs is another option there. So that's what's been going on with the Blu-ray exploit. But in other news, we're also seeing progress with the Lapscore project from D-Link Turtle. This project uses the old Mastercore exploits by Macaulay that uses a PlayStation 2 game, Okage Shadow King, to load PlayStation 2 ELF files from a USB or over the network. So Lapscore uses the exploit to load the kernel exploits to jailbreak up to firmware 12.02. So I had a whole segment planned here for the improvements that have been made to this exploit. But just as I was finishing up this video, it literally got a public release only 23 minutes ago at the time that I'm actually recording this. So yeah, this has just come out. So as we can see here, it now supports firmwares 9.00 right the way up to 11.0 for now. Higher firmwares are on the to-do list up to 12.02. So it looks like 12.02 will eventually get support but 12.50 and 12.52 are unsupported. D-Link Turtle saying revert your console or sell your console if you're on those higher firmwares because it will not work on those. And PS5 is also on the to-do list because the Mastercore exploit does work on the PlayStation 5 as well up to a certain point. So that is also available. So if we take a look here at this initial release, we have Lapscore version 1.00.zip. So if we go ahead and open this up, we can see we've got the ELF files for each firmware. So you just select whichever firmware version your console's on and you just use that ELF file. You also need the modified save file that actually loads the exploit, uh, which is from Macaulay, and there has been test versions released from 7.00 up to 12.02, because the initial version only worked up to 10.71. So there are more save files out there that you can use to load these ELF files. I recommend using the USB loader, because I think it's easier than using the network loader, where you have to send the ELF files over the network better to load them from a USB drive. Now I've tested the 10.01 version by reverting my PS4 with a retail copy of the game and using the USB loader by creating an ELFS folder on the root of a USB drive and adding the ELF file inside and also adding the gold hen payload to the root of the USB. With the USB loader save file installed, I can load up the game and restore the save, which then executes the loader. I just select the lapse ELF file and it then executes the exploit. A few seconds later, we get a PP pwned message on screen, which is a bit of a throwback to the old PP Pwn exploit. And then we get Gold Hen loading. And as you can see, we now have the PS4 successfully jailbroken using this exploit. So we can now use a PlayStation 2 game as well to jailbreak our PS4s, providing that you have a licensed copy of the game Okage Shadow King on your console. Now it's time for the Lua exploit to get some attention. So there have been a few updates here. I know some people are probably thinking, What's the point in the Lua exploit now that we have the Blu-ray exploit? But of course, the Lua exploit still remains unpatched as a user land exploit, all the way up to the latest firmwares on the PS4 and PS5, which means it's still a good idea to get your hands on one of these Japanese games for potentially future jailbreaks that might come out for the PS4, as well as being able to load the current jailbreaks on higher firmwares with the PS5 as well, above 7.61. Still definitely a handy thing to have. So firstly, another new game has been officially supported, Mikagami Samika. Uh, so it's CUSA 11481. So that's another game that you can now use to load the jailbreak with the Lua saves. And also Play Asia have recently restocked Jinky Resurrection and Fuyu Kiss. Although by the time this video goes out, they'll most likely be out of stock again. But it seems they're in the process of restocking other supported titles. So keep an eye on the Play Asia website if you're looking to get one of these games because it looks like restocks are ongoing at the moment. So definitely keep an eye on that. So we also have some updates on the PS5 about some upcoming developments, hopefully. So first of all, Lightning Mods posted that it looks like there is some progress disabling KCFI, which is Kernel Control Flow Integrity, on the PlayStation 5 below firmwares 7.00. Hopefully that means K stuff won't be needed. So stay tuned. And to be clear, K-Stuff will still be needed for firmwares above 7.00, but 6.50 and lower is key. 
So if you're on 6.50 or lower firmware, we might see this uh, KCFI being disabled on those firmwares, which might allow for us to be able to do more stuff on those consoles, things that we might not have been able to do so far with K stuff. So that's something that we can hopefully look forward to. Now, in addition to that, Zeko has also been posting some not so cryptic stuff. So he first of all said that if my friend Flats does not die in a plane crash today, expect some cool stuff from him in the following days. And then beyond that, he also posted soon dot 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 with a big Hen 2.0 picture here. So definitely teasing Hen 2.0 release, hopefully sometime soon. So Hen 2.0 is something that has been talked about in the PS5 for the past few weeks months potentially but nothing's come of it yet it's supposed to be like the successor to k stuff where it would allow us to actually run ps5 fake packages and hopefully resolve some of the other issues we have with k stuff where a lot of our ps5 game dumps we have to run in their dumped form with k stuff which does not allow all games to run because they're supposed to be loaded as package files and therefore when you run them in their dumped form they can have a lot of issues with certain games so being able to load them as fake packages would hopefully resolve most of those issues. And then not only that, but we have other issues like PS4 DLC having to be patched into the update file. And hopefully something like Hen V2 would be able to resolve those issues so that, uh, you know, it would be more like a jailbroken PS4. You just install the fake packages, the DLC updates and everything, and it would just work. That would be the hope. So it looks like Zeko is teasing a release of this at some point soon. And also we have hopefully control flow integrity being disabled on firmwares below 7.00 according to lightning mods. And finally, the last big teaser for the PS5 is Chameleon teasing a potential gold hen release. He says it's gold chicken for dot dot five PS5, of course. And when somebody asked him, you know, when could we see a release of a PS5 version of gold hen? He says as soon as Flats releases the PS5 fake package, so the fake package method, again, being basically Hen V2. As soon as we get Hen V2 and we're able to load PS5 fake packages, we may also see a release of Gold Hen for the PS5. So there's certainly some exciting stuff on the horizon for the PS5 coming up. Anyway, that's going to do it for this update. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And as always, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.